The FM23 beta has just dropped, but I have a job to do. I have to get GTS Culture to the National League to conclude this save. And halfway through the season, we're still unbeaten. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome to episode 32 of The Culture Club. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and we can finish this save-off in style. We've got half a season left before we're winding this story up. We started 32 episodes ago in the 11th tier of English football. Our task was to find out just how far we could take a club by focusing on the culture, the ethos, the moral compass behind the scenes, doing the right thing for its players, for its staff, for its fans. And I think it's fair to say this experiment has gone pretty well. Nearly halfway through our first season in the National League South, won 12, drawn 7, lost none. Best goal difference in the division. Edwards is the second top scorer. Leslie Smith the second best player in the division. He's holding his own. Beggs has obviously been brilliant. Lo Everton's got the most assists. Graxit's kept the most clean sheets. We've got the most shots for, the fewest shots against. We've got the second best possession in the division, and that's going to be very interesting because next up, we are playing Maidstone United. They are currently in fourth place a very interesting conclusion to the first half of the season. I was not expecting us to be able to compete at this level. When the board asked for a playoff finish, I thought that they were absolutely having a laugh. But the players that we've brought in have made a huge difference. By and large, the players that we've brought in have high determination, good teamwork, good work rate, high concentration, good decision making... And all of those qualities combined mean that players have settled in incredibly quickly. Team cohesion is already up to good. Considering we've brought in eight first team players, that's quite a remarkable achievement. Club atmosphere is excellent. The managerial support is excellent. I think it just goes to show once again that cultural ethos works. Jordan Einer has left. Though he wasn't even getting into the team and ridiculously he was our highest paid player. For some reason I had him on £275 per week. And he'd only played six times in the league, four starts for us this season. So it just wasn't worth keeping him on the books as, at all. So we do wish you well, Jordan. Unfortunately, there was just no justification for keeping him on those wages. And that did free us up to bring in Jake Thomas, central defender, the second best at the club now. Sean Vaughan, who offers more depth in central midfield and through the attacking midfield positions and has got potential to get even better. And we've just recently signed a Ricky Sullivan Forster, who is a very high potential young goalkeeper, potentially EFL League 2 standard. He's on a non-contract, so we're not paying him a retainer, only paid when he plays. Our finances are stabilising. They're no longer continually crashing down. We seem to have been able to just maintain ourselves around the 360,000 overdrawn mark. And there is one other little bit of news that I should quickly show you. For the third time this season, we're believed to be the subject of a takeover bid. So this is it. We're at home against Maidstone. We've got Graxic in goal, Agbula, Leslie Smith and Watson at the back with Vincent and McWilliams on the wing. Beggs and Olofinjana in midfield, Vaughan and Low Everton supporting Edwards up front. Now you'll see a little tweak to the formation. We're still training this approach that was working so well for us as our, as our main tactic. But to get Vaughan in the team... As an advanced playmaker with his passing and his vision, great first touch. I've shaken things up a bit, but we've got Weeks on the bench who will be able to come in and play that winger role if needed. Then we've also got Wharton, Hinshel with Jake Thomas and Toby Bull. The more we've been playing this system, the more confident the players are becoming. There are a few who are lacking tactical familiarity still, but if you remember earlier in the season, everyone thought that we were going to be in trouble at the back. It really hasn't been the case. We've got the best defence in the league. We're favourites against Maidstone. 
did not expect to be in this position at the start of the season. The team are motivated. They are raring to go. What can we do? Every test that we've come across this season, apart from that loss in the FA Cup against the team three tiers above us, which we only lost 1-0, we've overcome every challenge. I it can't be more full of praise for these boys. I had faith that we would do fairly well. Low Everton is clean through here and slots one in within five minutes. What a start to this game against Maidstone. These boys are just playing scintillating stuff this season. Creating opportunity after opportunity, keeping the ball brilliantly most games. And I can't express enough how delighted I am with their performances. When we got promoted, I mean, what's five back-to-back -back promotions we've had to get to this point? It must be unheard of in football history for someone, maybe Wimbledon when they were climbing up through the leagues, but to be this competitive at every stage is absolutely remarkable. I mean, fair enough, obviously, I've upgraded the players as we've gone, and we don't have many players in this starting lineup who were playing last season. Um, Vincent McWilliams, I can see, Leslie Smith and Graxit were there. Everybody else is new in uh, this this year. And it's that culture club ethos that's allowing them to settle in so quickly and perform at such a high level. It's absolutely brilliant. And now we've got a penalty. We're going to be 2-0 before half an hour. I hope. Have I cursed it? Come on, Vaughny. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's one thing we are lacking is good penalty takers. But that one get slotted away the best penalty taker in our squad I think has a penalty taking of five so that's something potentially to look out for if we get an opportunity to bring in some more players but at the moment this squad is looking really really good and uh, bear in mind oh my word another great effort there bear in mind this is a team in Maidstone who had even better possession in the league than we have but we've been all over them we're on the ball again and we've got 54 percent possession against them so they've created barely anything no shots on target from them we've had five shots on target already and 12 in total absolutely remarkable and edwards has been put through there by low everton a bit of a tame finish by edwards unfortunately but my word um olafiniana there just bumped into the Maidstone player, and uh, it's been given as a free kick. Goodness gracious, this is uh, beyond all expectations, beyond anything I could have imagined when we got promoted last year. And there we are, half-time. Look at that XG chart. I know it's been obviously accelerated by the penalty. But even so, seven shots on target compared to their zero incredible stuff boys that is time if ever there was one for stretching out your arms with your palms open in praise because i am not just happy i'm delighted with the number of shots on target there but they do get an opportunity oh dear me that was some poor goalkeeping by graxic there and some, from some poor marking to be fair by our defense that is a bit of a shame. It just goes to show they do still have some quality players. So Mason just float the ball in. I think it was McWilliams must have been there who their player got in front of. And Graxic, oh, to concede that at his near post, is probably not going to be very happy. But the ball's up the other end. It looks like we have a free kick now. We've got some players starting to get a bit tired. Beggs, oh, Beggs has done brilliantly from those free kick situations this year. It's a shame to not see him get it past the wall there. Leslie Smith to Olafiniana, just on the edge of the box. Watson picks up the ball, he's staying forward. Watson hits it across to Edwards, who nods it onto the crossbar. Oh, it goes out for a corner. So getting to the point where I need to think about some substitutions to keep the team fresh, but at the moment everyone's just really happy playing well we are still completely on top 
of this match. They're starting to tire as well. So we've got 20 minutes of the game left. What changes should we make? Our front four are all playing very well. So I probably don't want to make any changes there. McWilliams and Vincent not having the best of games. And in fact, neither is Leslie Smith. So I think we need to make a central defensive change. Jake Thomas should come on for Agbula and we'll play him as the cover defender with Leslie Smith with his natural left foot uh, playing on the left of the three at the back. And I think we'll bring Hinshelwood on to provide a little bit more energy now that McWilliams is tiring at Reich, right wing back. 2.4 xg compared to 0.24 incredible stuff and we have a corner we have a corner low everton can we get a good opportunity here tom oh it's cleared out vincent picks the ball up to vaughan on the edge of the box who oh my word i thought that was going to curl into the far corner but no just not quite enough swerve on it just dips into the outside of the post 10 minutes left time for one more tactical change, probably to rest one of our attackers. Vaughan has not played as well as the rest, so I think what we'll do is bring on Weeks and make that tactical change that we referred to earlier. Switch things back to the formation that has worked so well for us this season. Weeks is motivated to show what he can do in the last 10 minutes. With his energy, hopefully he can disrupt this back four even more. But Graxic's going to play out from the back here. Thomas picks it up. It goes to Olafiniana. Begs to Low Everton. Just nice passing triangles here. Hinshelwood picks it up. Just takes his time. No need to rush. Low Everton. Oh dear. It's intercepted by Maidstone. And it's lobbed over the top, but Thomas picks it up. Oh, no! And a terrible mistake there from Thomas and Graxic. Terrible, terrible mistake. Oh, gosh. That was a dreadful mistake by Thomas there. It was like he was trying to play a back pass and just... It, it, it's like he tried to play the pass and just missed it entirely. Four minutes left. Oh no, are we going to concede here? No, Vincent puts it back out. This is not the way that I want to be ending this match. Come on, boys. Come on, clear it. Tilney Graxic does manage to pick that one up. Thank goodness. And we are on the ball towards the end of the match, but it falls to Maidstone again. What is happening here? We've been all over them the entire match. Oh no. Can we get the ball back here and just hit them on the break? One more effort. Because they are absolutely going to be feeling confident now that they could come out of this with the three points. We're just falling apart. They, it goes out for a Maidstone corner. I don't even want them to see things out. I want them to get up the other end, hit them on the counter here. But the ball breaks out to the Maidstone player. If we don't get three points here... If we, oh gosh, if we lose, this would be the most ridiculous. Oh, Weeks picks the ball up. It breaks to him. What can he do? Oh, come on, players. That is a huge, huge disappointment. Thomas came on and unfortunately, pretty much his mistake lost us two points there. It feels like a loss. That's, that's gutting. That is absolutely devastating. Right, I've let the players know. I'm disappointed because we should have won that match based on what we created. But I must remember, in the grand scheme of things, drawing with a professional team who are pushing for promotion when we are still top of the division is not exactly a bad thing. Merthyr are really on a roll, but we're still four points clear of them. We're eight points clear of Dorchester. And even if Maidstone win their game in hand, we're still seven points clear of them. I cannot ask for anything more. Oh, and here we go. The agents are now starting to take advantage of the high performances. Low Everton's agent wants to get an improved deal. 
Okay, his man, he's currently on £200 a week. He's looking for a closer to 300 Seeing as the save is drawing to a close, I don't need to worry about the long-term finances, to be honest. But it's a shame. I am going to miss this team. But there is still a lot more to accomplish. We're in the FA Trophy. Could we win a double in our final season before moving on to FM23? Win the National League South and win the FA Trophy. That has a pretty nice ring to it. But given how well Merthyr have been performing of late, they are the, the form team in the division. I'm going to have to come back and see how we perform away from home against Merthyr. Again, if we manage to get a result there, then things are looking very good. Are we going to maintain this, this form? There are a lot of questions that we need to answer in this second half of the season. And I'm sure you're just as keen to find out the answers to them as me. So if you've enjoyed what you've watched today, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and join me again soon. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching. Be excellent to each other.